Welcome back everyone. My name is Elton Martin. We're going to be continuing our Let's Play of Wrath of the Righteous. Where we left last time we just killed Staunton and we killed Nura. Uh, she's dead there on the ground. And we're going to leave and get into our city. This first part of the video is going to be really short actually. We're going to go talk to Irbeth. And then I'm going to pause because I want to do a little bit of respecking and uh, some changing of things. And then we'll do some shopping, and then we'll figure out where we want to go. We the wanna... commander of the crusade has managed to overthrow 70 years of demonic rule in Dresden and restored the Sword of Valor to its rightful place. Will the commander be able to defend the banner he has won with such a valiant effort? Maybe. Hit continue. There we go. <laughs> Just gonna turn my microphone a bit there. There we go. It was facing really weirdly. I think it just kind of moved on its own, as is tradition. Very long load screen, but here we go. All right. There's our skeleton, and there's us. Just chillaxing. Night commander. <laughs> I know you have not had time to sit in on any council meetings in recent days. You've been so busy restoring order in Dresden that you've barely found time to sleep. Irbeth gives you a deferential smile. However, there are some matters that require your attention. I am ready to report if you have a moment. This better not be more of your pathetic whining. <laughs> My report pertains to some urgent matters that cannot be put off. I will endeavor to not take up too much of your time. Irbeth squares her shoulders. The Crusade forces liberated Dresden quickly. The demons did not have time to recover from their defeat in Canabras. Every death is an irretrievable loss. But your leadership has minimized such losses as much as possible. The battle for Dresden went brilliantly. Your party attacked the demon commanders, cutting off the head of the enemy forces. We suffered some losses, but nevertheless, it was a triumph. Queen Galfrey has been notified already, and sent her messenger with a letter for you and a royal reward. Beerbeth gives us the letter, and we also got a Cloak of Resistance. The letter says, Commander, the written word is a poor medium by which to convey my thanks, but it is the only one open to me at present. With this missive, I enclose a reward worthy of the leader of a victorious host, a Cloak of a Warrior of Iamade. But it, and these words of praise, are but a fraction of the accolades you deserve. The Crusader armies acted with skill and coordination, and Dresden has been returned to us, as has the Sword of Valor. I'm astonished by the reports of how the Holy Relic has changed. But I recognize that what truly matters is our victory. Your victory. Maybe the first of many. Accept my valediction and thanks. I prayed for your success and I shall continue my prayers. In anticipation of meeting in the near future, Galfrey. The decision to use Vescavors as weapons. I can't deny that they were effective. And yet you still shouldn't have done it. While the demons did suffer serious losses from the creatures, a lot of our fighters died as well leaving our soldiers to be eaten by insects. Is that really how we crusaders want to win? One day the whole world will be insects. But that's not all. The Vescavores did not simply disappear. They are still flying around the city, in smaller numbers, praise Iomade. People see small swarms of them here and there. If you don't find a way to purge the city of this pestilence, I'm afraid that it will soon be devoured by a new swarm. Indeed. In any case, we would never have won if it weren't for your amazing powers. The moment you raised the Sword of Valor over the Citadel, the light of it must have been visible all the way back in Mendev. And the banner itself, it changed after coming in contact with you. Anyone else would call it sacrilege. I don't know what to make of it myself. It's surprising and strange. You have changed, Commander. Both on the outside and on the inside. And the power you have, it frightens me. As a paladin and leader of the Eagle Watch, I must seek out and destroy the blight of corruption in the ranks of the Crusaders. But as a soldier, I see that you're winning. You are leading us to victory. Anyone who stands against you will only be playing into the hands of the demons. That cannot be allowed to happen. Anyone who stands against me will die, no matter what side they're fighting on. Bear that in mind next time you think to criticize my methods. Understood, Commander. Irbeth presses her lips into a hard line, but doesn't dare to argue. She gives a subdued, curt response. We won the battle for Dresden, but this war is far from over. 
The demons know our true strength, so we must brace ourselves for a merciless counterattack. They will do everything they can to gain control of the city and destroy you personally and all of us along with you. The only good news is that cultists make up more than half of their forces, so they will have to march the same roads as our fighters. If they were all demons, they could appear here instantaneously and lay siege to the city. Praise Iomade for small mercies. Indeed. The main demon forces are moving out from the City of Eyes and the Threshold Fortress. Scouts are reporting that for now we don't stand a chance of tearing through the defense and launching a counterattack. We can only gather our forces, rebuff their attacks, and wait for the right moment. Unfortunately, other hostile groups keep appearing out of nowhere. And on top of all that, Minago is still prowling around somewhere out there. Anevia is trying to find out where that abyss scum has run off to. Maybe she's already got some leads. Luckily, we are not alone. Mendev is with us. Queen Galfrey has sent us the first reinforcements. They've just entered the city. Besides, news of your victory is spreading through Avistan. I'm sure that crowds of new volunteers will soon be pouring into Dresden, inspired by your feet. And that's very good news. Because we're going to need troops. Here is a brief report about the main problems we're currently facing. Yerbeth shows us a sheet of paper with a list of four items. Demons with special powers, a secret path, missing patrols, and a dragon. What can you tell me about the demons with special powers? Remember that Nabasu that attacked our camp? He had powers that no ordinary demon should have. Yerbeth's voice is very calm, but you can tell she's working hard to maintain her composure. It is not the only demon of its kind. We keep receiving reports about similar monsters. All isolated cases for now. But it's possible that in the future, we will see entire squads, if not armies of them. We must find out where they're coming from. Find the source of their power and destroy it. If we don't, they will crush us before long. Even you can't defeat an entire army of such monsters. A secret path? What are you talking about? We can usually spot armies of demons in advance, as their hordes march along the Grey Road from eyes or threshold. But sometimes, packs of them appear out of nowhere. They're managing to avoid our scouts somehow and sneaking into our territory. If we don't solve this problem, we cannot attack. The demons will just appear at our backs, block off the gorges and cut us off from Dresden. Anevia is trying to find out how the demons are getting into our territory, but she hasn't succeeded yet. Talk to her. She will tell you more about what she's doing. There's a patrol missing? Yes. It disappeared without a trace during a mission. We didn't even find any bodies. Maybe someone abducted them, or there's some natural threat in the area. We can't rule out the possibility of desertion, either. The troop was patrolling the southern road out of the city. The last surviving settlements of Sikoris lie in that direction. But after the siege of Dresden, contact with them was lost. Hardly any of the inhabitants survived once the demons invaded the area. That's where I started the search. A dragon? What dragon? As if we didn't have enough problems with demons already. Now there's a wild dragon in the vicinity. Luckily, it's not part of the demon army. If the demons had a dragon on their side, it could pose a serious threat. But there's very little food in the world wound, and the dragon doesn't seem to have a taste for demons and cultists. She keeps attacking small squads of crusaders, picking off those who fall behind, ravaging supply trains. The dragon's been sighted frequently in the sky, but we don't know exactly where her lair is. We have someone to help with this, though. Oh, Greybor. Do you remember the dwarf who bravely attacked the baler in front of the citadel during the siege? Yep. He is back in the city. And he doesn't mind hunting this dragon, apparently. Go talk to him in the tavern. We might be able to help each other. Is that all for now? There is one more thing. As you know, there is a vast dungeon under Dresden. It's empty now. None of those imprisoned by the demons Why is... survived, oh, yeah, never and we died. don't have any new prisoners. We've temporarily placed the body of Staunton Vane in the dungeon. You slew him. What are your orders regarding his body? Anevia thinks we should burn it quietly and forget about it. Some want to see his corpse displayed in the square, but I don't think we should behave like demons and barbarians. He may have been our enemy, but he deserved to be buried as a knight. However, 
The decision is yours, of course. Oh, I have my own plans for that corpse. Let it stay in the dungeon for now. I will decide what to do with it. Your own plans. <laughs> As you wish. Yerbeth frowns, but doesn't dare to second guess you. Commander. <sighs> that day during the battle... I... Beth is hesitating. You can see the struggle on her face, as if she doesn't know what she should say, or doesn't know whether she should say something else. No. My apologies. That is all, Commander. Thank you for your time. Giving a salute, Irabeth turns around and quickly leaves. Alrighty. Uh, we're gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna go respec. So if you're looking to respec here and you aren't playing on a difficulty that bars you from respecing, um, the... Hillor guy is at the inn, so you have to come all the way down to the inn to do that. After I finish respecking, I'm going to go to the Zog weapons first for provider, the blacksmith. We're going to go see who Tsai is. This is actually the first I've ever been, so now I'm looking forward to see how this goes. I don't actually know where to go or what to do from this point on, so it's going to be a bit of an adventure. I will see you guys shortly. Alrighty, I am back. I respect my character quite a lot. I also got a different skeleton. I chose the Vanguard. Um, none of the skeletons really have good attack bonuses. They all kind of suck, but at least the Vanguard you can get to be pretty tanky. So if we take a look at our Vanguard now. Uh, he's got 36 armor class. He's using a plus 3 tower shield. I gave him Radiance. He has a plus 3 longsword, but I mean, plus 10 to hit versus plus 9 to hit is not that big of a difference in all honesty. If you consider like some of our other characters... Plus 20 to hit, plus 20 to hit, plus 19 to hit. Well, I mean, even our Oracle has a better chance to hit, which is kind of sad. Honestly, a little bit. Um, we also changed our main character a little bit. So someone pointed out that Kitsunes are actually really powerful, and they're right. So uh, what we did was, respect to Kitsune, um, you'll notice our stat block is pretty intense. And the reason for this is, they pointed out, I can't remember their name, I'll look it up for later. So I can give them due credit, but if we look at Kitsune's, where am I looking here? I need to find... Maybe under abilities? Maybe it's under traits. Okay. Uh, Keen Kitsune. So they get plus two dexterity, plus two intelligence, and negative two strength. That's fine. We also took the feat, the mythic feat, I should say, to get rid of that negative two strength, and then also we chose Master Trends Muter. Master Shapeshifter, sorry. Uh, whenever you become the target of a polymorph effect, all the physical ability scores are modified by plus four. Additionally, if you have Wild Shape, you can use it any number of times per day. We have Wild Shape because we're Kasune, right? So as long as you have it on, right there, that Chain Shape ability, you get plus four to Strength, Dex, and Con. So it's pretty intense. Uh, we have 26 Strength, 20 Dexterity, and 14 constitution now. I also got rid of our vivisectionist level and just took another level of sorts in, which reminds me, we have to redo all of our spells, but that's fine. And I took abundant spell casting, so we have lots of spell slots, which is good because we have lots of spells to have, like blur, mirror image especially. Um, interestingly, if we look at our, our lich spellbook, we can also finally get mage armor on our main character, which means that we're going to take... Um, that mage armor mythic feat eventually to get that extra armor class, which I think will be really, really important for later in the game. Uh, as for our mythic path, oops, clicked off the screen. I did take indestructible bones instead of the sneak attack one because uh, damage reduction 10, and whenever they land a hit on us, the enemy becomes cursed with decaying muscles. They get negative two to attack rolls until the end of combat, which is pretty intense. So we can actually be an even better tank. So there we go. That's where we're at. I'm gonna go look at some stores with you guys here, obviously. Let's see if there's anything cool to buy. There's a blacksmith here. We can also sell, like, all of this for $19,000. That's not going to be everything we need to sell, though. Let's go name A to Z. We still have all these cold iron swords. For some reason, the cold iron stuff just doesn't go with the rest of it. And we're just going to go through and sell off everything else that we don't need. I'm going to keep the edge of force because it sounds cool. Also, maybe we'll use daggers one day, but not spears. Not the battle axe, not the great axe. Get rid of all the hand axe plus ones. Head cracker we'll never use. Herald of Pain we'll never use. Holy crossbow, never gonna use. A kukri plus... Wait, did it let me keep the... Can we just make infinite money by respecting our character over and over again and getting these different weapons from the different skeletons? 
Okay, we're not going to do that, but apparently you totally can do that. If At that point, though, just get a mod and mm, just change your gold value. It'd be such a pain in the ass to do that over and over again and kind of pointless. It is kind of amusing, though, that that is a thing you can do. Uh, we don't need scimitars. We might need a longbow. Whatever the blah, blah, blah. Okay, nope. Nope. Yeah, no. I'm going to keep Soul Shear. That's a really nice glaive. And if we ever need somebody to use a glaive, they're going to use that one. Get rid of the Scimitar plus three. We'll keep Solemn Hour. We're going to give it back to Erebeth at some point. We're never going to have anyone use a door, an Orc Double Axe for sure. I have a bunch of armor that I'm never going to use. Armor of Dispersion. No. No. Medium armor is kind of weird. It falls into a place where it's not good enough to use regularly for most of your characters. But it's not also light enough. Like, it's not... It doesn't give enough armor class to do anything useful. It's, it's kind of pointless, actually. Half Blade of Vigor. Um, maybe on that one. Don't need that. So now we're at 210,000 gold. Let's see what we can buy here. Let's go price in descending order to see what the most expensive things are. There's a powerful pummel, which is a really nice earthbreaker that we're never going to use. Um, blah, 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 blah. Some of these are the things that we sold to him. There's really nothing I really want. Light mace, no. Dueling swords, no. Long sword plus three, no. It's all garbage. All right, moving on. Let's go to the exotic goods vendor. Let's see what's there. It's possible to be something useful here. Price in descending order. A Falcata, nice. But no, because we don't have anyone that uses Falcatas. There might be a gnomish pick. No, nothing. Okay, well, that's the end of that shopping. This is not as much shopping as I would like to have done. There's one more place to go to. Actually, two more. The jewelry trader. Where are they? They're like right here somewhere. If I were the jewelry trader, where would I be? Oh, there's one. Arcane Weaver Jewelry Trader. Okay. Can we just loot this? Seems like a poor business model just to let your customers take whatever they want, but whatever. Bracers of Armor Plus 5 are really nice, and we're probably going to get those for our main character, for sure. Do those stack with Mage Armor? I think they do. Armor bonus does not stack with armor bonuses from different sources, such as bonuses from wearing armor or from a mage armor spell, so it doesn't. Never mind then. What's this? Plus five competence on persuasion checks. No, I think we'll pass on that. Goggles appear sight. Take 20 on next to spell magic once per day, and plus one bonus to your levels to overcome spell resistance. That's actually kind of nice. There's a bunch of, um... Emulate of natural armor plus threes, which are really good. Bunch of diamonds for resurrecting people, also kind of important. All these things are just plus two, though. They're not that great. Can you give me, like, plus fours? All right, let's go try to the Arcane Weaver. And price in descending order. We got a robe of order. If the wearer of this robe has a key pool, the robe increases it by two. If they're of lawful alignment, it gives a plus two bonus on attack rolls against chaotic enemies. It can only be worn by a monk. We can wear that if we wanted to. Well, that's kind of neat. Whenever the wearer of this robe uses a divine power to summon a creature, they can choose to give those creatures either holy or unholy abilities. That's neat. I mean, there's some okay items. Some of them are very specific to things. It's a lot of spell scrolls. So many spell scrolls. Weep. Nope. Okay. Well, let's go find out where we can go then. Let's talk to... What's the One-Eyed Devil? Okay, let's go talk to the One-Eyed Devil. And then we're going to go to the tavern and talk to... Um... Anevia. Let's drawing a blank on her name for a moment. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to try out this new build. We're going to hit like a freight train. 
we do 19 to 31 damage. We won't be doing sneak attack damage anymore, which does kind of suck, but such is life, I guess. We have more spells. Oh, I didn't put my spells in. Before I forget, and then we're stuck with no spells. I'm gonna go shield, 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 shield. I'll grab one banish, one XP treat, a couple enlarged persons, and maybe like a another shield. Alright, blur, bunch of blurs, bulls, strength, these last forever, one minute per level, I guess not forever, but actually, let's go back. We don't need that many blurs, or any blurs at the moment, I just kind of want bull strength. We'll take one web, sometimes web can be really, really useful. Now uh, you can turn on spell strike and then use vampiric touch as a touch ability, it can be very useful. Um, I'm gonna lose one haste and get to spell magic. Because we have Nevier, uh, we have Nenio who also has. Um, that's what we're looking for here. Haste. Yeah. We're gonna grab for this particular thing more mirror images. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Mirror images is amazing. Mirror images are amazing. I want something. Defensive, if possible. Although it really doesn't look like we have a lot of defensive stuff. You know what? Power from death might be useful against a large group of enemies. Get more powerful as things die. We'll try it out. One eye devil. A short, chubby tiefling with a golden eye patch spits chewing tobacco between his feet and takes another pinch from a tobacco box adorned with jewels. Find a you, Commander. Welcome to the One Eye Devil's Trading House. His proud manner suggests that each word begins with a capital letter and perhaps even continues in capital letters as well. Show me your wares. What do you got? He's got some things that are cool, like some barding. What is that? What's Haramaki? Some sort of light armor. Interesting. Not really anything I want to buy, though. Although that charisma... If that was charisma and intelligence, it'd be so good. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. That'd be so much armor class and stuff. Alright, uh, what else do we have around this area? Born Autumn Haze. A tall, pale-skinned elf with grayish hair salutes you with graceful movements. Greetings, Commander. Even though the miscreant I came demanded to find is dead, I've decided to stay here a while longer. There's enough evil roaming these lands, and not all of it comes openly to the battlefield. Many criminals are hiding in the shadows, and I will be tracking them down, granting them peace as best I can. Glad to have a new ally. Thank you, Commander. Okay, bye. Let's go talk to Nevia. I'm kind of sad that the stores didn't have anything really that we wanted, but that's fine. It happens. Nevia. How many nobles are in this? Like... The ratio of nobles to peasants in this bar is a little concerning. Like, how many nobles live in this city? There's at least 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. At least 12 nobles here. That's a worrying amount of nobles. Also, is a Nevia. Nevia's at the inn, isn't she? Yep, probably. The boy sitting on the counter looks about 18. He salutes you with dignity. Those eyes scarcely rise from the tavern's ledger. The night commander of my establishment. What an honor. My name is Phi Kito. I'm the owner of the Half Measure. How should I address you? I ask because some don't like undue familiarity, while others scoff at the tediousness of ceremony and titles. You can call me the Armored Armadillo for all I care. Your commander is. Are you sure? I'm going to remember that you know. Phi smiles mischievously. No, just call me by my name. Deal. I know your name, of course. Who in Dresden doesn't? So what can I do for you? Wine? A meal? A heart-to-heart -heart talk? What do you got? Oh, he has cool things. Why does he have better things than the stores? He's got a Ghost Touch Igniting Short Sword. For 50 grand, but still, that's amazing. It's better than most of the things in the store we wandered through. Those are amazing, actually. I think these are probably for my, um, for Camellia or for Wendwog. Goggles of Malokio. 
These goggles grant the wearer a plus in combat as bonus on perception checks whenever the wearer confirms a critical hit with any bow. The target becomes disoriented for 1d4 rounds, suffering negative 4 to initiative checks, attack rolls, athletic, and perception checks. How are those? Those are really good. Sold. I'll buy them. Moving on. Uh, Grey Boar is here, but not Nevia, right? She's at the end. Well, we can talk to Grey Boar. We're here anyways. Let's talk to him about this dragon problem he's got. Before, How can I help you? Before you sends a dwarf, he has stern, rugged features and looks to be well-armed. He fills his pipe with tobacco from Garund, lights it, and blows out a cloud of smoke. Finally, he addresses you in a deep, dignified voice. I want to hire you for a dragon hunt. A large, adult female? The one that's been snatching people and carrying them off? I've heard about her. That's an impressive target. I can take this job, but only if we do it soon. I'm expecting a new assignment from my regular client, and I'll have to leave as soon as I have the orders. And of course, you should know that this dragon will not come cheaply. Two and a half thousand gold, paid in advance. How about a small discount? Hmm. Let's think this through. Are there lots of assassins in this town who have the valuable experience of subduing dragons and are willing to work for you? Will I lose any profit by protracted haggling? Will you? Is there any chance that someone less competent than I am will be able to locate your target as efficiently as I would? Hmm, no. I don't think so. There is absolutely no reason for me to give you any discounts. Two and a half thousand gold is an honest price for the head of a fire breather. Final pay. Excellent. Let's get down to business. It's no easy thing to take down a dragon when you don't have wings, so you'll need to follow my lead. The best thing would be to catch her by surprise in her lair, but we need to find it first. Of course, since she doesn't leave tracks, that might be tricky, but I think I have a solution. We need to go west of Dresden to the Grimwood Forest. One second, I need to turn off notifications on the team apparently. Already problem solved. The dragon's been seen there often. According to the scouts, this is likely because there's still some wild game left in those parts. We'll set up an ambush there. I don't think we're ready to fight a dragon. I hope I can rely on your honesty. I understand that on our way to the dragon, there may be other fights or places we need to visit for various reasons. That's to be expected. However, should I see that you are deliberately delaying the contract, or that you're dragging me off to assault some demon citadel instead of going after the dragon, we will have to revise the terms of our agreement. Grey War blows a cloud of smoke from his pipe and gives you a searching glance. Uh, when did we get those items? Was Grey War in our group, technically? Nope. Also, that's not part of our stuff. It must be on him. Is he not? He's got, oh, he is part of our group. Okay. Regil. I'm sorry, Grey Boar is part of our group. We can remove his stuff, actually. He's got some decent gear. He's also only level 9, so we could probably level him up. What is he? Slayer. Fair enough. I have Is he actually... He's not a group member, is he? You don't keep him. I'm almost certain you don't keep him. You can get a familiar. Huh. Are they any good? Probably not, honestly. But I love familiars, so we're gonna get one anyways. I don't know what's good. Okay, so let's see. Stealth perception. Oh, they're just... I see. They're not actual combat pets. I understand. What does he even have so far? Oops. Alright. Weakening wound. That's fine. Double slice. So he uses two-handed weapons. He's got sneak attack. He's got studied target. That's pretty good. We're here on Slayer Talents. 
Does he have two weapon fighting? I'm hoping so. Yes, he does. Dwarven War Axe, Accomplished Sneak Attacker, Hammer of the Gap, Power Attack. Does he use two Dwarven War Axes then? What does he use for weapons? Oh, he uses a Hand Axe in his second one. I mean, 17 to 12, or 17 and 12 to hit aren't the worst. Okay. We'll see what we can give him. If you could hit a lot on the dragon, give her lots of con damage, that'd be amazing. Wearying Strike is pretty good. Hunter Surprise is pretty good too. Confounding Blades is amazing for not getting AOO'd. Crippling Strike is amazing too, though. That negative 2 strength damage is pretty good. I'll take Crippling Strike, I think. Alright. So we need to bring him with us, I guess, to deal with the dragon. So we'll find a Nevia. We'll do a Nevia's conversation, then we'll probably much, or pretty much call it a video there. And in the next one, we'll go hunt a dragon, I guess. Let's go to the inn. Is a Nevia outside the inn? Horgus. Actually, Horgus is here. Let's talk to him. Where is he? Horgus Gorm has been expecting you. Thumb stuck in his belt. There you are. Been waiting, as you see. I too have joined the crusade. I don't know how to swing a sword, but war is costly and I have money. Besides, my intellect and business sense may prove useful even on the battlefield. Besides, besides I believe... He shifts awkwardly from foot to foot. I owe you an apology. The way I behaved was... rude, ill-mannered. You are an honest and honorable person. That's not true. You have clawed your way up to the bottom, or from the bottom of society to the title of Knight Commander and you're friends with Queen Galfrey herself. Such persistence deserves respect, Horgus tilts his head in brief acknowledgement of your merits. Please allow me to give you this magical amulet from my humble personal treasury to mark our future cooperation. I have to go. I don't really want to deal with any of that other stuff at the moment. What's the blackened mirror? Whenever the wearer of this amulet uses a hex, the DC of the saving throw is increased by one. So it's awesome for Ember, who we can't use because she's good. What is she wearing for an amulet? Silver tongue amulet. Okay. Let's go back and talk to Erebeth real quick. I think she's still up here, right? Did she leave? She may have left. I don't remember where we talked to her to start with. I think she's not here. Alright, let's just go talk to er, um, Anevia then. We also can go do the abandoned building, which has the Vescavore thing inside of it. It's for our Swarm That Walks quest. I do know that part. I think a Nevia might be on the ground floor. Or perhaps she is not. Let's go to the second floor. Well, there's Hillor. That's the respecting guy. Nothing in here. Maybe she's not in here. We can listen into a conversation, apparently. Let's listen in. Perception 23. It's not letting me listen in. Like, literally, I'm clicking on the thing, it's not doing anything. So, perhaps it's broken. Oh, well, there's Nenio. Not who I'm looking for. Maybe it's in the journal. Maybe it tells me where she is. There's so many quests in the journal. Um, okay. Okay, so we can't go on to the next chapter without completing these quests, obviously. <laughs> Dragon's Fate. Still have to do that at some point. Battered Spirit. We have to talk to Erebeth, apparently. We have to go find those people at some point. Talk to Anevia. It'd be super helpful if you told me where she was. Alright. Let's wander into some rooms here. Peasants. Citizens. More peasants. 
more citizens. No Nevia. There were some lootables there, but I'm not going to bother right now. Alright, if I was Nevia, where would I be? Okay, let's just go through all these people. Jewelry Trader, Arcane Weaver, Arisino. Arsino, sorry, not Arisino. Sai, Horgus, One-Eyed Devil. So she's definitely in a building. She might be in the Citadel, actually. Screw it, let's go do the um, Vescovor thing. We'll do something in this video that's combat-related. It's one of these two buildings here. I think it's the abandoned building, but it might be the house. I'm almost certain it's not the barracks. I'll go search for uh, Anevia between videos. We'll find her. So this is the house first, I guess. Yep, this is definitely the one. Or at least it's got a swarm inside of it. Can we win? Come on, hit him. Anytime you'd like to attack. Our skeleton didn't even come along for this. Alright, next one. We're still stuck with Jibber, which is annoying. Five seconds left. Do we have regeneration? We do have fast healing. Oh, cool beans. We'll go downstairs and see what's down there, but I don't think that's where the bees are. But it's possible, I suppose. I think this leads down to the dungeon, right? Oh, it is where the bees are. What the hell, skeleton? Good job, skeleton. You helped kill something. We're gibbered again. There we go. There's a Vescovor Queen there. This is the right place. I was right, inadvertently. The engorged body of the young queen of the swarm pulses, oozing corrosive slime. In her buzzing, you can hear the barely distinguishable echoes of the now familiar swarm song. Her voice is yet not yet strong enough to harm you, but it is patently clear that if the creature is permitted to grow, and her children to multiply, but soon the anthem of abyssal insects will be humming in the skies above Dresden. Examine the queen. The queen is very young and, for now, utterly defenseless. Her weak chittering causes not madness, but only vague unease. The eggs in the clutch can be counted on two hands, and the translucent chitin growing over her body is so delicate that it can be crushed under your boot. But who knows how quickly she will grow, and how much time she will need to repeat Dresden, reheat in Dresden the nightmare that befell you during your attack. Leave. The young queen of the Vescovors quietly chirps on as you walk away. We're not going to kill her. We need her alive. For the future. We can try and break the lock. We definitely cannot pick this lock. I mean, we might be able to. We have a 15% chance. Let's give us some tries. Oh, we just literally can't pick locks. Okay. We broke some shit. Okay, well, didn't work as well as we'd hoped. That being said, whatever was in there is now broken. Maybe we just don't break it. Maybe we just leave it. Maybe we can come back later when the Vescovor is bigger and have, like, actual people in our group. And then we can, like, lockpick it. Possibly. Cause a respec. <laughs> Become a rogue momentarily. Come down here. Open that thing. No, that would be stupid. That would be a gigantic waste of time. So I think we're going to end the video here. I'm going to go look for Anevia. We did do... Yes, I know. Thank you. We did do the things. 
that we kind of wanted to do in this video, I guess. We didn't buy anything neat, except for the one pair of goggles. I was kind of hoping for better gear to buy, but I guess not. We can start building our city in the next video, and then we'll also head out to try maybe to find a dragon, or something along those lines. It's in the abandoned building while we're here. We might as well take a quick glance. Shiny chitin. There's a stairs down. This way. It's also a door. Huh. Just a giant room down here. Like, this is a large room, and a pretty big area for not having much inside of it. It's weird. Did I miss a building during the Siege in Dresden? I don't think so. I guess it's possible. But, anyways, that'll be it for now. Take care, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day.